So, Jim, which of these two films do you prefer? Slave Girls, for sure. I mean, I assume you're going to have a similar answer to me, if not almost the exact same. I think pound for pound, minute for minute, Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity was a much more exciting, thrilling movie. And it even did the kind of mystery aspect better than The Return of the Invisible, or The Invisible Man Returns. Not that I have anything against Vincent Price or anybody in that movie. It felt like a lot of the actors weren't, I don't want to say doing their best, but it just felt kind of lazy or or, or tired, I guess, is is perhaps a, a better word to use. Other than the fellow who played Detective Sampson, where Calloway. in Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity, they're not the best actors, but you can tell that they're trying really hard. And I think that shines through and everything about Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity just comes together to make a genuinely fun and exciting and silly movie, whereas The Invisible Man Returns is just tiring. I'm going to agree, ultimately, with your pick. I do prefer Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity. I'm going to very much disagree with a lot of the reasoning. I I do not think Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity pulled off the mystery aspect better than The Invisible Man Returns, even though the mystery aspect wasn't that strong in The Invisible Man Returns. I mean, what is it in Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity? It's the most get- dangerous game. We've seen that story a thousand times. We know where it's going. I think, ultimately... Just beginning to end, Invisible Man Returns is just more entertaining for me. I I don't want to say there's not a dull moment, but there's fewer dull moments. And, you know, neither film overstays its welcome. You know, Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity is about an hour and a half. Invisible Man Returns is about about an hour and 20, so they're both relatively short movies. I do do think, again, this sort of agrees with what you were saying, but it's not that the acting is poor in The Invisible Man Returns, but I don't think it quite works for some of the things that the movie is trying to do. And yeah, I won't say the... I I agree, the acting Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity is not great, but everybody does what they need to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I just prefer the movie. I think it's more enjoyable. I think The Invisible Man Returns is fairly dull, really, outside of those three scenes that I talked about. I will push back a bit on the on the mystery aspect because I mean I do agree with you in the sense that yeah it's it's a story that we've seen a million times. However, there was at least a glimmer of hope that that story wasn't going to turn out to be the exact same. You know, like this <laughs> Zed character could have actually. Been I'm not a sure there guy. was for me, well, but you know, okay. Because again, he was just some weirdo on a planet, right? I mean, um, oh, yeah, that's that's the if that fits the profile of most dangerous game. It, it does, you it know, does, but antagonist, there's a possibility, doesn't it? But there's a possibility on a planet? that he wasn't. You know, listen, it's either it's either it's either the most dangerous game. If you get a weirdo on a planet like that, it's either most dangerous game. <laughs> which I, I I just thought of another example of like the recent Fantasy Island movie is kind of a most dangerous game premise. I would say it's either mm-hmm. going to be that or it's going to be the Island of Doctor Moreau. In both cases, I've seen thousands of, of adaptations of those two stories. So, so I, I, for me, there wasn't much of a hope that it wouldn't be something like that. But whatever. Like, I thought if, if the film had any twists, it would maybe be that the robots used to be people or something like that. And again, we go like a Dr. Moreau, but with robots. Yeah, or that the, or that the creatures in the Phantom Zone used to be people. Or yeah, except the the creatures were such a small part of the movie. I mean, I, I understand the creature is like the first fucking thing we see in the movie, basically, because there's that... It's not a cold open because it comes after the credits, but the opening scene is the creature hunting a woman, and then um, Zed steps in and takes care of business. But, but then you don't see the creatures for a long time. The Phantom Zone is kind of underdeveloped, and then the creature just pops up, and he's not even the first of the phantom zone monsters to pop up because there's that weird zombie thing too but whatever you know it's fine movie's entertaining it's not great oh you're right. <laughs> i forgot about it's this. it's yeah there's there's the little zombie guy i told you that was my biggest laugh yeah, when he just kind of hits the deck the throat. <laughs> <Yeah>. so jim <laughs> yeah how do you think this holds up as a drive-in double feature oh man i was gonna ask you um i don't well think i mean does. you will ask me eventually but we yeah, both right. need you're to right answer this question Let's but, rip uh, that I, Band-Aid off. 
I okay, I'll rip it off. I don't think it does. I don't think it does really hold up as a as a double feature. And again, it's not that. And I I think really the main problem is the Invisible Man Returns with this. I just think it's too slow. Even though like it's not a super slow movie, but it just feels too slow, too perhaps 1940s y to be paired with an 80s space adventure movie direct to video (laughs) piece of shit yeah (laughs) yeah full of women getting their tits out you know but and again you know i i just think i would be too tired to care about (laughs) slave girls from beyond infinity after watching the invisible man returns but that's also just me i don't have really have a problem with the invisible man returns i just don't think it would work well opposite it how about you i don't feel too strongly but i am going to disagree I think um, we, we, you know, in terms of similarities, we've got kind of fugitive on the run stories with both films. But the big difference is Invisible Man Returns, though I would say more of a comedy than Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity, also more serious just by nature of the filmmaking isn't a complete joke. So we have that wrap up and then immediately we get like sex appeal and Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity and it's just women in bikinis the entire movie. And then I'm like, okay, yeah. And I mean, like you're saying, Logo, you're too tired to... Like, no, you're not. You you immediately wake (laughs) up when you see Elizabeth Kate, and let's be honest. So, yeah, I don't think it's a great double feature. I don't think either of these films are great, quite frankly. But I think for what they are, I think they complement each other in in this kind of the sci-fi thriller adventure kind of goofy way. 